a whole new season of BattleBots is right around the corner. Every single year, BattleBots continues to amaze me. Some of the most amazing battles that we've ever seen, some incredible robots that are really pushing the limits of what you can achieve with some of these mach machines. Robots from all across the globe, everyone with their own stylings, and with a new series, that means new robots, be it from new teams or old teams trying something completely different. So in this video, I'm going to list 10 new BattleBots that I'm excited to see. This isn't in any order, but let's hope we can all indulge in some hype together. Let's start this. And to start us off, we've got Emulsifier from Team Bots FC. This robot looks incredible. Now, if you don't already know, Emulsifier is based on a 30 pound robot. And honestly, whenever if you want to get an idea on what Emulsifier can bring to the box, then you got to check out these fights. Like, this is a thing I've been noticing more and more in BattleBots. You see a robot starts off as quite a small little design, you know, as the teams test out to see how well it works. And then they go, hey, how well would this do if we made it a lot bigger? And we've seen some amazing results from that. Uh, we've seen the likes of Deep Six. I believe even Huge was a smaller robot at one point. Whether that was before or after, I can't quite remember anymore. But the point is, this is proving to be more and more of a common thing for BattleBots teams to do. Test a robot at a smaller weight class and then bring it up to the heavyweights to really do some damage. That wedge likely is extremely hardy, could likely stand up to some really big hits. And as we've seen from the smaller weight classes, that spinner will no doubt really leave a mark on their opponents. I am still nervous about the tracks. Spinners in BattleBots are great at destroying wheels, and a track makes them all the more vulnerable if that were to happen. But I'm willing to bet that BOTS FC, the people who created Shatter, one of the most heavily armoured robots we've ever seen, probably have that in mind and have probably already made Emulsifier incredibly tough to take out. With that in mind, while I know that a lot of people who are watching this video are going to roll their eyes that I've started off with a Vert, to me there's enough going on here that really does shake this up. I think this could be really interesting. And next up we have Banshee, a new, a wonderful looking pneumatic flipper that's entering BattleBots this season. Now. We've started to see a huge variety of flippers enter the BattleBot scene. We've seen Hydra, a hydraulic flipper that is so low to the ground, so compact, yet so supremely powerful. We've seen Blip, a flywheel powered flipper, can also dish out amazing flips, but we are losing out on some amazing American style launchers. Obviously Bronco has been gone for the past few seasons, Sub-Zero's seemingly taking a leave of absence as well this time around. So there is a gap there, but thankfully Banshee has come along and is filling that void. And the team isn't unfamiliar with this type of thing. If you don't know, Team Small Robots, once again another team that's worked in smaller weight classes before, have created robots such as Kelpie, one of the smallest flippers I've ever seen, if not the smallest I've ever seen. It's incredibly powerful, and it really shows the groundwork that would go into making Banshee. Obviously, there's no guarantee that it's going to have that same level of power on the battle box. I mean, we saw how big Bronco had to be to achieve that kind of power, so I don't know how well, how strong Banshee is. But if it's even half as powerful as the likes of Bronco, then we will have a mighty force on our hands. I have a feeling that there's a lot of promise with Banshee. We're seeing time and time again that, despite the fact that flippers in BattleBots seem to be a dying art, that they still have lots to give. Now next up is Ripperoni, and <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I don't think Ripperoni's going to get very far. I'm picking Ripperoni because it has the possibility of being the greatest car crash we've ever seen. Ripperoni is such a unique looking vertical spinner. It's got that huge vert on the front that gives me visions of like Nightmare or uh, Backlash or the lightweight version of Deep Six. Um, the wheels are 
uneven because obviously the way that the chassis is designed, you kind of have to make one wheel bigger than the other. It's got this one wedgelet at the front in an attempt to try and be somewhat low to the ground. But I, and then you see that there's this gigantic motor powering the weapon, which tells me that this thing packs an almighty punch, which means that this robot very really could be an incredible, crazy thing to watch. It's either going to destroy an opponent, absolutely split them in half, or we're going to watch it throw itself around, much like Deep Six's lightweight form would do. Ripperoni is such a wild card to me that it gets me excited just because I want to see what's going to happen. Win or lose, Ripperoni could be extremely entertaining. Next up, we have Dragon King. Now, people brought this up to me in the comments section of my last video, and the only reason I didn't bring it up was because it wasn't on the website. However, it has been brought up to me that it is a reserve, so, so I thought, why not? I might as well bring it up because the chance that this robot might make it does leave me a little bit excited because it's so... It's kind of a bit absurd looking, isn't it? So if you don't know, this was originally built by the same team behind Red Devil, um, but is now under the ownership of the same team behind Scorpios. Now, look at Dragon King. It's got that stuff, like you can see the resemblances to Red Devil, but then the grabber is this dragon head, which already, that's already won points with me. But Unlike Red Devil with just one saw, Dragon King has two saws! Like it's Robot Arena 2 and you can just fit more weapons on for more damage. Oh yeah, put a second spinner on, that'll do you well. I love it. Don't get me wrong, it's absurd and I don't think it's going to win much, but I love it. It's such a bold, brave design to have, especially when you see some of the robots in BattleBots. That is a brave design to bring into the battle box, but I love it all the more for that. Next up, we have Ominous, and Ominous is a really interesting looking robot. Like, this looks extremely solidly built, and it has that vertical spinner at the front that reminds me of robots like Magnetar and Pulsar, which, if you haven't watched Robot Wars, that won't make a lot of sense to you. But basically, Magnetar and Pulsar was this robot that was extremely well built. It was a lot of fun to watch. In fact, it's been in the live scene, and that weapon packs a hefty punch. And I can only imagine that when it's in the battle box and allowed to go full power, it's really going to send some robots flying. On top of that, Ominous has this actually quite unique drive system. It's Omni Wheels, similar to the likes of Shatter and Glitch. But with a freewheel system, that means that Ominous is probably going to be moving pretty uniquely. I imagine you probably only need three wheels when you're doing a system like this. So, I mean, I've got to say that Ominous is going to be incredibly sleek. It's going to drive around similar to the way that Glitch did, but instead of an egg beater, a big, beautiful, powerful Drisk spinner. And similar to how I was quite excited and interested to see how Glitch would do, Ominous has left me very much excited to see what they can do. Next up we have Doom, and Doom to me has so many things going for it. One thing that I do, I am sad about, is the fact that they did get rid of the paint job that I saw. Like, if you're a BattleBot supporter, you saw like the picture of Doom with like the paint job, and sadly it looks like it's gone for a unpainted job, which is a bit of a shame. I hope that if Doom ever comes back in a future season, we get to see it with a nice paint job that really exemplifies the hardcore design that this is. So it's a hammer saw, similar to the likes of Sawblaze or Blacksmith. But as you can see, it has a more beta slash terahertz type spin with the wedge. It's got this big, quite sturdy looking wedge all around it. And like with that spinner and an even bigger, more brutal looking spinner held by the team, I gotta say, Doom is really fascinating. It looks surprisingly compact for what it is, so I gotta, I don't know how they've managed to fit all the stuff they need in there. I hope that there's enough power in there to really leave a mark on opponents, and I hope to God that unlike what John Reed and Beta have done, I hope they have an option 
for dealing with vertical spinners otherwise because if they can't get underneath opponents that's really going to do them a massive disservice if they get into the battle box next up is shred it bro and i am a sucker for a good drum spinner i love minotaur it's one of my favorite battle bots in fact one of my favorite robots of all time i think copperhead is really cool i loved concussion in robot wars and I liked Pain Train. I was so excited for Pain Train, if you remember in past videos. And from that same team, they brought Shreddit Bro. Now, Shreddit Bro immediately gives me visions of robots like Poison Arrow. Poison Arrow being this four-wheel drive drum spinner that took out Son of Waiyachi with just this almighty hit. One of the best hits in BattleBots, in my opinion. And Shreddit Bro looks like the team has really learned from their mistakes. We got some big, bulky wheels that look like they look quite tough, in my opinion. The side bits look like they could also take a bit of a walloping, so if they face a big, mighty horizontal, they should be able to keep going for a while. I am a little bit nervous about the top panel. Um, I'm worried that it's not thick enough. But that drum, let's talk about that drum right there, which looks like a pretty dang nice drum. It gives me vibes of Copperhead's drum, which we've seen how well Copperhead's drum can do. That's a pretty mighty drum in its own right. It's a solid looking drum spinner, and honestly, as if you haven't noticed yet that a solid drum spinner can really do some damage to the competition, then trust me, you are going to see it from the brilliant drum spinners entering this season, and I hope Shredded Bro is one of them. Oh man, now we're getting into the weird spinners. So this is Double Tap, and I remember saying that this thing looks like it came from the year 3000. It looks like some dystopian future spinner. Like, I don't know what to say about it. It just looks so bizarre, so strange, but in the best possible way. And part of what makes that, so, that visual complete is the incredibly unique spinner, really. I can't think of any robots that have done it. I'm sure in the history of the sport there probably is, and someone will bring it up in the comments. But the way that this works is, is that the spinner will smack into an opponent and then will unfold so that it gets a second hit, you know, a double tap. This means that if an opponent gets in a bit too close, it's not so bad because you get a little bit more time because the spinner's all curled up and then it unfolds when it gets up to speed. It gives the spinner a little bit more time because horizontals can absolutely fall victim to robots, you know, crashing right into them before they can get up to speed. But I will say, regardless, this is an... Now, obviously, the big... Now, obviously, the big concern is... If you've got a spinner with this many moving parts, there's the real risk that it's going to start falling apart. I remember Marvin, you know, a pretty solidly built robot, except I'm pretty sure one of the teeth came off in its, like, first fight. So i got to say, that part does leave me nervous. They're going to have to make sure that those parts are really fixed on. And, I mean, even if not, they do have a small, usual bar attachment, so if this spinner really doesn't work, they do have a backup. And on the other weird spinner that has got my attention, it's Horizon. Now, one thing that I've been told about is that the way that the spinner works is the two small spinners apparently cause the whole thing to spin, which, let's be honest, it's still an incredibly strange design, but I love strange designs. Like, if you if, if you didn't get that from the fact that I put robots like Ripperoni, Dragon King, and Double Tap on this, like... I'm sorry, but sometimes strange designs just win my heart. And Horizon is such a unique robot. Now, I am concerned about the armor. Obviously, to facilitate the entire design, there's so many, like, little gaps there in the armor to try and, I guess, make up for the weight, which I imagine means that if they face a robot like Endgame, it would break in pieces. But I can also see how this could work. You get one hit from a spinner, and before they can stop that one, here comes the other one. These two spinners are constantly moving around, so there's no really good way at coming at Horizon. I don't think Horizon's going to do that amazingly, <laughs> disclaimer, but it's such a crazy design, it's such a fun design, that I'm fine with that either way. Plus, if I want a horizontal spinner that I think is going to do well, I just need to look at our final robot. 
Triton. Now, Deep Team Deep Six. Sadly, Deep Six wasn't accepted into BattleBots this season. Um, it, it's I'm, my only guess is that it's just because of the damage they kept doing to the battle box. Deep Six was so powerful, so crazy. It was too good for this world. But clearly, from the same thought process that created Deep Six, we've got Triton, which really has come full circle. Like I said, Deep Six, I'd consider a vertical version of Tombstone. And now they made the horizontal Deep Six. It's come full circle, people. Uh, Triton's wheel design is something I'm still not quite used to. I still don't quite get it. But the spinner design, I absolutely get. And watching it spin up, this thing gets up to speed incredibly quickly. And given that the kind of damage that Triton could likely do to opponents... Yeah, robots are more built to deal with horizontal spinners. But I bet you anything, Triton, much like Tombstone, is a robot that, even if you beat it, you're going to have one hell of a repair job after the fact. And there we have it. That is my top 10 new BattleBots that I'm excited for. Be it new teams, returning teams with new designs. There's so many incredible robots coming to BattleBots this season. Feel free to let me know some BattleBots that you're excited to see. I, in the comment section down below... Let me know what you think of some of the robots that you saw in this video. Obviously, with them being new, there's only so much we can glean from them until we get to see them in the battle box. So be sure not to judge them too harshly. I know it can be easy to say, why would they do that? But until we see it in action, we can't know for certain. So be polite. <laughs> but with that being said, I hope you all did enjoy the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Next week we'll be doing the top 10 returning BattleBots that I'm excited to see. And with that all being said, I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!